world's gone to the devil in the dive bomber, and you're diving with it. You gotta change your direction. You gotta zoom up again. The Lord knows your hidden sins, and that's any kind of sin, brother. What did the great prophet Isaiah say? Look ye blind that ye may see. You gotta make the Lord your see and I just as he is mine. I can see a better world, a greater world. Every man shall bear his own burden. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You gotta sow the right crop. You gotta look in your hearts and ask yourself if you can answer one thing. How much is each of you guilty for all the evil in the world? Why do you do the things you do? Why? Santa Sierra? No riders. Come on, get in. Sierra, huh? You ever been there before? I live there. I was looking for work. Here they were taking our hands at that chemical plant. They weren't. It's rough. Maybe you ought to try up north. Oregon. Maybe you'd do better up there. No, I, I gotta stay where I am. I got a wife and a kid. Another one on the way. They sure drop the net over you, don't they? Nobody jumped up and asked me, but I figure when a guy gets married young, he can just as soon go out and cut his throat. Why they should let a guy get a marriage license before they let him vote? It's criminal. Leave it to the female gender. They hook you before you get good sense. Now, you take my old lady, and I'm not kidding. You want her, you can have her. Hey, fella, go home. Oh. So long. Good luck to you. Thanks. to the zoo. I don't want to go to no zoo. All right, Tommy, have it your way. Hey, Pop, Pop! 
Mom promised me a quarter for Howard. a baseball game. Now she won't give it to me. I didn't hear you coming. How are you, darling? Fine. Can I have a quarter pop? You look tired. I didn't get much sleep last night. My whole club is going to the baseball and it costs a quarter. All the other kids are going. Oh, they are? Here, well, let's do it. Fifty cents? <laughs> Howard. You got a job. You go to that ball game buy yourself a couple of hot dogs. Gee, Pop, thanks a lot. Bye, Mom, I'm late. Howard, tell me what happened. Did you go to the doctor? Oh, never mind about that. Tell me about the job. Oh, Judy, honey, you promised me. They've got good doctors at that clinic. They're the best in town. Oh, I don't really need a doctor yet. Anyhow, I knew you'd get a job. And then we could pay for my own doctor. Oh, tell me what happened. Tell me about the job. There isn't any job. But you just gave Tommy a half a dollar. What did you do that for? Because I wanted to. You wanted to? Yes, I wanted to. My kid can go to a baseball game, can't he? Not when we owe money for groceries. Last night, I needed 50 cents more to buy eggs. Then we'll do without them. Judy, honey, don't pick on me. Now I'm tired. I've been up all night. Begging for groceries. Begging for doctors. Is that what we came to California for? You know what we came to California for? You wanted to come as much as I did? And I help it if a million other guys have the same idea? Well, I wish we were back home. At least we weren't beggars. Oh, Judy, don't cry. Please don't cry. What can I do? What do you want me to do? Tender, then add the wine. On a low flame. Gotcha. Tonight I'm gonna have veal scallopini. <laughs> uh, Beanie for paradise, Mike. You get tired of writing that newspaper column, I got an apron that'll fit you. You're a natural born chef. Excuse me, like it just jerk. Bottle of beer? I love what you wrote in your column yesterday. How do you like that? A priest helping Indians fight a bunch of pirates. This must have been a town in those days. Where do you dig up all your info? You said it, Mike, dig. To write a newspaper column, you need a good public library and a strong typewriter. And an occasional idea. <laughs> How many newspapers you call me, Mr. Stanton? A couple of hundred? Something like that. Hey, you're a dime short. Eastern beer's two bits. I didn't want Eastern beer. Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask me? Ever notice, Mr. Stanton, you take a beer drinker, you got a jerk. Mm, I don't know, Mike. The Lord must love the beer drinker. He made an awful lot of them. See ya. Okay, kid. That's enough. See if any see pair of shoes back there. These? Yeah. Thanks. Shoe and roll have done the goodest. Must be getting rusty. Nothing wrong with that last one. Yeah, it was all right. Joe? No, 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 thank you. But it's still ain't my money game. If I'm gonna bowl for 25, 50 bucks a line, <laughs> I better sharpen up. Come on, help yourself. Why pay bar prices? Oh, no, thanks. The beer uh, is okay. Make a boiler maker out of it. That's all beer's good for. It's sure been a long time since I had one of these. Hell, this one, will you? What outfit were you in? Hmm? Oh, 
Well, no outfit, I guess. I, I never got out of Camp Roberts. Roberts? What do you know? I took my basic there. No kidding? Yeah. Hey, what a joint. Couldn't wait to get shipped over. You got over, huh? Yeah. Pretty rugged, hmm? That was a rumor I heard in Paris. Oh, Perry. Ooh, la, la. You know what you could get for one crummy pack of cigarettes? Boy, the markup was terrific. <laughs> sure wish a guy could get a buck that easy these days. Things kind of slow, huh? Yeah, they're up and down. They're mostly down. It's kind of tough getting anything steady. You can drive a car, can't you? Yeah. Walk me over to my hotel. Well... Hey, come on, come on. It's only a couple of blocks. Maybe I can put you on to something. Okay, sure. Hey, hold this one, will you? Hey, what's your name? Tyler. Howard Tyler. Tyler, huh? Where are you from, Howard? Boston. Boston, huh? Throw that brush here, will you, Howard? Oh. these days I'm gonna go back to Berlin. What a town. You know, I never could decide between those big German frolies and those little French dollies. I give them all the same break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you ever notice one thing all women have in common? They're all partial to the same color, Korean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Not bad, huh? Oh, de Nui. Mmm. Well, that smells good. Ah, uh, it smells expensive. Six fifty a bottle. That uh, guy's got to keep himself in shape. I used to play a little handball at the Y. Huh? You never know when you're going to get in a beef. <coughs> hey, what size collar you wear? Um, fifteen and a half. That's too bad. A lot of these I could spare you, but uh, hey, feel that? That's real silk. Cow, silk makes my skin itch. <laughs> Fast that follow, will you? Sure. That's platinum, you know, not silver. Boy, you sure treat yourself all right. Yeah, they're pretty good. Hey, you think I'm a shame? No, no, you look good. Jerry. Huh? Uh, got any idea what time it's getting to be? 5.30. What? You want supply? Well, I, I gotta get home. Jerry, about that job you mentioned. My wife doesn't know where I am. <laughs> Keep a guess and they respect you more that way. Hey, you like this one? Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Jerry... What do you mind? Give it to me. I liked it. He took it right off his neck. <laughs> I'll have to introduce you to him sometime. He's quite a character. Well, he can afford it. He averages 20 bucks an hour, five hours a night. You figure it out. 20 bucks an hour, what does this guy do? Run a diamond mine? What diamond mine? All he does is pick up five little cards. Just five little cards. Only he knows what they are before he picks them up. <laughs> That's some job. Uh, I know another guy that averages four or five hundred a week, sometimes more. He'd be willing to split with the right partner. He's the guy we're thinking about for you. For me? All you have to do is drive his car. Think he'd be interested? <laughs> what makes you think he want me for a partner? My personal recommendation. All you gotta do is drive his car. He does all the work. What kind of work? Oh, you know, knock over a gas station, maybe a hamburger joint, a liquor store. Nothing risky. Oh, no, no. Oh, wait a minute, Jerry. I didn't know that you were talking about that kind of work. Huh. Something wrong? Well, I... done a lot of things in my time, but... Shoot yourself. Just trying to get your break. You asked me, didn't you? Well, yes, I asked you, but I... Well, what? Anybody else make any better off a lady? Oh, you guys kill me. The kick in the teeth, the more the kick in the better you like it. What are you looking for? Handouts? There, there's ten bucks. Live. Don't get sore, Jerry. I... Who's sore? I feel sorry for you. I tell you, the trouble's the First National Bank. They'll listen to you. They got a special tough luck department. Come on, take the ten bucks and get out of here.
effect. favor? Will you go over and tell my wife that I won't be home for dinner? Because I've got to see about a job. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Yeager. Right. Bye. <coughs> there it is. You nervous? No. Well, maybe. So was I the first time. You'll get used to it. Pull up past the joint. Keep it in gear. Relax. Here, Jesse Jane. Button it up. Do, do what it says, Joey. You're just as tough, mister, with an old lady and a sick old man when you ain't got that gun. Oh, 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 shut up. Joey, shut up. Joey, Joey, my friend. Lucky I didn't kill him. Oh. about that guy that came in? Have any trouble? Nah. I told you, didn't I? I never have any trouble. How'd you do? Is Judy here? Yeah. We're all looking at the television. Come in. No, no, thanks. Just tell Judy I want her, will you? Sure. Get out of my way, you varmint. Nobody ever called me a varmint and live. Excuse me. One day, varmint. Mrs. Tyler, your husband wants to see you. Hey, men, they're heading up by Cactus Creek. We can cut them off by Tommy. right through Piddle yeah. Pass. Get your jacket on. Man. It's so not finished. Come on, get your jacket on. Picture's almost over. Tommy, did you get my note? I didn't know what time you. Oh, got that's me. all right, honey. Don't worry about it. Come on. Pretty soon we'll have our own television set. Howard, you got a job. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Tell me about it. Is it a good one? What do you think? What? I got an advance on my salary. Here, don't you want it? Oh, Howard. Tell me about it, Howard. 
Look, talk about all the luck. I just happened to run into this guy. He's a foreman down the Santa Sierra cannery. Tell him the whole story. He says I can use a guy like you on the night shift. Fifty bucks a week to start. Oh, you'll be working nights. What's the difference? How's about something to eat? <gasps> Bait ham. Oh, it's so expensive. So what? We got a right to live a little, too. Oh, boy, potato chips. Tommy. Mm -hmm. Son, you still want that two-wheeler? Yeah, the television, too. Believe me, when your old man says something, he means it. Never forget that. Howard, have you been drinking? Well, just a couple. This fellow me kind of celebrated. Now, Tommy, go wash your hands first. All right, they're not so dirty. We'll put the TV set right here. Oh, Howard. And this? Well, we'll throw this piece of junk out. What oh, don't be <laughs> silly. Honey, when we get that television set, you can have the whole neighborhood in any time you want. <laughs> Professor, Boogie Woogie is the most scientific of musical forms. It's the only one that allows the piano player to keep the music going with one hand and feed himself with the other. Drinks are on the house, Professor. Don't be coy, anybody. Gil, darling. Hal's on it. Your dinner looks beautiful. You look beautiful. You smell wonderful. <laughs> the phone, darling, it's for Hal. He can take it in the alcove extension. Okay, okay, hurry up. Oh, and listen, I heard Nicholas barking down the street. Vito must be coming back. He practically the Adam. Hal, telephone for you. Why don't you take it in the alcove? Oh, thanks. Bye, I think our great man is almost here. Honey, honey, shall I invite him over for the game tomorrow night? Oh, fine. Well, why not? If he's such a mathematical genius, he ought to be able to play a little bridge. Time and space have met. Ain't it wonderful what the H-bomb has done, Professor? It's made a scientist almost as important as a good fullback. Vito, we thought you were lost. Please no reproaches, my humble apologies. This little rascal, he led me not home but to a camp. <laughs> oh, Nicholas, I thought I told you to bring Dr. Simone straight home. Yeah, I'll take him to it. Oh, don't be too hard on him. There are magnets more powerful than duty. In addition to the cat, he met a lovely French poodle. <laughs> That phone call was from Fowler. There's been another holdup out on Highway 101. Did you tell Chuck to stop the presses? Science can no longer take a position removed from the problems of everyday life. There are no ivory towers. Hal, I can't talk business on an empty stomach. Sherry? The recipe we got from that little place in Rome, remember? El Greco's? Before you leave, I'm going to fix you some of their polenta with quail. Quail. I'm grateful for that day you and your men found me. Uh, first <laughs> honors, Vito. Thank you. The boy was pretty badly slugged. How's about going down there with me after the party breaks up? Maybe you'd like to do a special feature. On a hold-up? Plates, everybody. Well, why not? You remember that liquor store a couple of nights ago? And the service station stick-up the day before? Two-bit robberies, Hal. Don't try to talk us into a crime wave. Maybe we're in one and don't know it. Anyway, our circulation can stand a little crime wave. Uh, wait a minute, Vi. That's not enough for you. You're a growing girl. My diet. I was under the impression you hired me to write a column, not general news. Maybe a bonus would interest you. A bonus? You mean money? Well, you know, that might make a petty robbery very significant. Say you'll do it for me, Gil. You've got a big following in this town. With your byline on a special series, I could really sell some papers. What are you two plotting? The boss is trying to get me to work tonight for money. Oh, don't you dare take Gil away to the office again tonight. I'm just getting used to him being home nights, and I like it. And besides, we do have a house guest. But this is important, Helen. You understand, Doctor. My mathematical mind suggests an alternative. Why couldn't the house guest accompany his host? Oh, this wouldn't interest you, Vito. Bye, have some mint sauce. Hal's discovered we're in the middle of a crime wave. On the contrary, all waves, light waves, sound waves, and crime waves interest me very much. <laughs> well, you see, darling, I guess I'll have to work tonight if only to entertain Vito. Looks like I'm going to be a headline widow again. Well, let's live while we can. Who wants some wine? I do. Oh, Barbara, you'll have some wine. <laughs> Get a lead, officers. Let me know, huh? Yeah, we'll get on to this guy. A lot of out-of-state hoodlums moving into California towns, fellas. 
No, this looks more like some local roughneck. Yeah, this guy likes to leave his trademark. Smoke, fellas? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Clendenning. Miguel? Yeah, Hal. Get this, Vito. The angle we'll take is there's probably some eastern gang operating in the community. That always makes good copy. This is what's known as building up the family trade. By the time Hal and I get through, this town will think it's been invaded. Uh, Mr. Clendenning, a, a thought occurs to me. Isn't this uh, destructive to the public health? This distortion of uh, realistic values? Oh, it's not that I personally go in for sensationalism, Doctor. I don't. If I had my way, I'd minimize crime as much as possible on the paper. Uh, in that case, uh, wouldn't the digestion of your readers be greatly improved if you were to put uh, your editorials on the front page and uh, the crime news on the editorial page? <laughs> How about that, Al? Where's your sense of social responsibility? Oh, I've got my share. But selling newspapers is my business. That's the way I make my living. Good night, Doctor. And don't forget my invitation. I'd be very happy to show you around the plant anytime. Thank you. Good night, Hal. <laughs> Better get some gas while we're here. They can use the business now. Joe, fill it up, will you? Sure thing. Yo, tell me something. Are you yourself not afraid of the effect this exaggeration of violence we'll have on your readers. Hal's little crime wave. Vito, Hal works on a very fundamental formula. People love to be scared to death. The more you scare them, the more papers they buy. If frightened people are the measure of newspaper sales, it must be a profitable business these days. <laughs> huh? Hey, crime wave! thinking about that job tomorrow night. It's got me plenty worried. Yeah, you're always worried. Listen to what this guy here, Stanton, says. The outbreak of hoodlumism in this county during the past two weeks is described by Sheriff Demig's office as the work of a flood of expert gunmen. <laughs> How do you like that? We're a flood of expert gunmen. We had to send him our pictures for the front page, huh? You know what we can get for it, don't you? What? Tomorrow night. Sure, but look at the payoff. What do we get tonight for risking our rotten necks? $24.83 to split. This way, bang. Once around, we're on easy street. That's the only reason I'm going for it. And after that, believe. No more. You ain't getting chicken on me, are you? You'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there, Jerry. I may be a couple of minutes late, but I'll be there. Yep. Yep. Okay. How do you like the black? Mm -hmm. Oh, the oh, cowboy. Honey. Now these I do like. You got these in her size? Oh, look. Oh, no. How? They're much too fancy. Where would I wear them? Honey, we're going to step out one of these Saturday nights. Get them in her size, will you? Look, hon, I got to get going or I'll be late. Buy whatever else you want, huh? OK. Bye. Bye. So long, partner. Bang! I got you. Don't ever do that, Tom. Well, I'm sorry, boy, but you got to be careful. You put somebody's eyes out. OK? OK, Daddy. Maybe he'll be late. He could be in there another hour. Not him. He's always out by 11. <laughs> the folks must set an alarm clock. Now, will you relax? Look, Jerry, keep your hands off. Uh, I mean it. Don't shove. You want to stick your chin out for peanuts the rest of your life? Don't you want to get in the big dough, be somebody for a change? I'm here, ain't I? 
Yeah, you're here. But I tell you, right on time. evening. What, what's the idea? I feel like a riot. Yeah, it's just my style. Why don't you turn her over? Let me hear what she sounds like. Look, I... Turn her over. Not bad. Get going. Straight out, Elm. Where'd you get the suit? Huh? The suit. Where'd you get it? Around here? Oh, I... I, I have them made. Around here? New York. You guys should treat yourselves all right, don't you? New York, huh? How do you like that? What are you tying me up for? My wallet's in my back pocket. There's $20 in it. $20, huh? <laughs> you ought to be able to do better than that. But if we ask your old man real nice, he'd do a lot better. Yes, indeed, a lot better. What's my father got to do with this? Say, ah, uh, open your mouth. Let me know if it's too tight. Come on, get in there. Oh, I told him that last night. Now, be nice, Johnny. It's late. I've got to get back. All right, okay. Have it your own way. Oh, wait, Johnny, wait. You can see me Thursday. Honest, honey, you can phone me Thursday. So nobody's been up here since the war, huh? I'm gonna take him in there, you said. Hold that. his feet. If somebody comes around here one night, they'll come around here any night. But where are we gonna take him? Will you quit talking so much? That's where we get the jackpot. Jerry! Hey, Jerry! Jerry, what are you gonna do? Jerry, don't! You do that again and I'll break in half. What's the matter with you anyhow? You his brother or something? Jerry! Jerry! You never said you were going to kill him. Why do you have to kill him? You want him to give our description to the cops? What do they do when they get a chance? I got more brains than any of them. You hear me? I got more brains than any of you! Jerry, don't you dare kill a guy just like that! I'll have a description. Too bad. Yeah, this is tie clip. We could have something to send with a ransom note. You say you're gonna still try to collect? What are you talking about? You think I slugged him just for the fun of it? Put it in your pocket. 
20 bucks, all right? Yeah. All right, let's get him into the water. Come on, come on, we ain't got all night. in hospital having a baby. And this time it didn't hurt at all. She said daddy the minute she was born. Oh, rub my back. Does it hurt? Just pressure. You do want a girl, don't you? Yeah. You sure there's no pain? Don't lie to me now. I want to know. No, I'm all right, Hart. I feel fine. What's the matter, Howard? Nothing. Why? Your hands are trembling. I felt a little cold. Much better. She had the biggest blue eyes, just like a picture. I got right up out of the hospital and took her shopping. Isn't that funny? We went to the same store. I bought the dress in today. I was buying her a pinafore. Gracie, bring me another order of them French fried onions, huh? One bicarb coming up. Where you been? I said 
layoff. Will you, Jerry? I don't feel so good. Didn't I tell you to quit slobbing on that shellac? You want to get osis or something? What'd you eat today? I ate. What? Soup. Oh, you call that eating? Bring me a steak, Gracie. No, I don't want it. How's about a steak sandwich? Yeah, give it all. Uh, bring him a cup of coffee first. He don't feel so good. One cow on a slab. There's our insurance policy. Take a look at it. I don't know. I, I must have lost it. I looked in all my pockets. Can't you do nothing right? Don't get sore, Jerry. What do we need that tight clip for? Because that's the way I think. Dessert? Sure you don't want some coffee? Coffee gives you a wake night. Come on, dive into it. Velma's waiting with a girlfriend. Look, Jerry, I've been thinking about the women. I, it's risky bringing women with us. You've been thinking, what with? A couple of guys blowing into a strange town might attract attention. There were a couple of dames that looked like just a party. See? Yeah, I guess you I can't do it. Oh, well, come on. It's getting late. We got a 40 mile drive at us. Hey, beautiful. How's about a check? Something wrong with your sandwich? No, you just don't feel so good. Here. Now you can go into business for yourself. Qué bonito. How many times I got to tell you not touch nothing, no belong to you? Go on, vámonos a tu casa. Go on home. I go on. I got to make a phone call and not touch a car. saying to her, listen, you fat old hag, why don't you go someplace else and have your ugly puss worked on? I don't see why Paul puts up with her. She raises a holler every time she comes in the joint, and you can't tell me that's good for business. Oh, she wouldn't be satisfied if I made her look like Miss America. <laughs> oh, honey, take it easy. Anyway, I've been thinking of quitting. Jerry's got some kind of a deal on. He won't tell me about it, but from the way he acts, I know it's big. He keeps sending plenty. Him and me this, and him and me that. You know, I told him the other day I always wanted to go to Havana. You know what he said? Maybe you'll get there yet, he said. Havana. That ain't a bad idea, he said. Not half bad. <laughs> but it was the way he said it. What's he like? Jerry? Oh, honey, he's nature's gift to women, and that's no falling. <laughs> Only don't get any ideas now, because he's mine. All mine. You know I wouldn't make a play for your boyfriend. Thank you. And besides, I'm saving myself for the man I marry. That's sweet. Did um, Jerry say anything about what his friend is like? No. 
Only that he was nice. Kind of quiet, he said, but nice. I like him quiet. Only I hope he isn't bald. Oh, there they are now. Jerry, honey? Yeah. Come in. Hiya, baby. Hey, you want to knock my breath out, you big baboon? Honey, I'd love to knock your breath out. Uh, meet Howard Tyler. Delighted, I'm sure. Right. Watch yourself with him, baby. He's a dog with the dolls. I don't want to have no trouble. Oh, uh, allow me to present Miss Weatherwax, Mr. Slocum, Mr. Tyler. Hi. How's about a drink before we get started, honey? Sure. Think you can dust off some glasses? Huh? And they're not dusty, I'll have you know. Hi. How do you do? How do you do? Honey, what you driving? Idiot. Hey, how you two doing back there? Don't do nothing you wouldn't be ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me nervous. <laughs> Where do you come from, Howard? Back east somewhere? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Massachusetts. I thought you talk kind of different from folks around here. I was born in Ohio. You were. You're not married, are you, Howard? No. I'm glad. I wouldn't go out with a married man, you know. I'm not either. Married, I mean. Give me some cigarettes, will you, Howard? Here. Have a couple of mine. I got plenty. Would you mind giving me some cigarettes? Oh, and uh, mail this one, will you? We got to write to my mother last week. <laughs> if I know you, it's for a dame. Give it to me. Oh, come on. Let me... Give it to me. <gasps> okay, okay. I told you, it's to my mother. <sighs> I was only kidding. <sighs> you do that again, I'll conk you one. <laughs> Look at the bobcat. That's the way I like it, baby. When you're mad like this, you really send me. Yeah, I'll send you all right. It won't be to your mother. Oh, baby, I was only fooling her. Oh, go on now. Don't be mad at me. Come on, wipe it up. Wipe it up. Excuse me. Uh, All right, help yourself. Okay, if you don't mind waiting. Uh, my wife had a kid this morning. Uh, gotta let all the folks and all my friends know. Gosh, I never thought I'd be standing on a street corner mailing announcements about a kid of mine. <laughs> Been married nine years. We almost gave up hope. I suppose you think I'm acting a little goofy, but a kid, well, kind of bowls you over. You, you gang kids? Say, uh, maybe you can tell me something. Is it natural for them to cry all the time? Oh, sure, they all do that. Oh, really? <laughs> I've been kind of worried about it. I was ashamed to ask the doctor. How much do you weigh? Six pounds and three ounces. Oh, boy, is he a whopper. Well, <laughs> nice to have a talk with you. <laughs> Good night. It's OK. <laughs> I almost forgot. Have a cigar? Thank you.
Post us, I'll take this party. Ooh, I wish I could. <laughs> oh, no offense. You got good taste. Sit right out here, honey. Waiter. Garçon. A little service, please. That's the idea. As little as possible. Hey, wait just a minute. What do we got here? Hey, our silverware. <laughs> Yeah, comes direct from the hotel Stadler. Hey, just a bit of food. Oh, oh, well, look at that. <laughs> hey, shake. Myself. Say, don't blame me. If you think I'm screwy, folks, blame my psychiatrist. I'd have paid my bill last month, and he's let me go crazy. What music? <laughs> I'll be all right when I have a drink. You've had quite a bit to drink already. Maybe that's why you don't feel so good. Why don't you have some coffee? I don't want any coffee. I want a drink. Oh, I'm sorry. You have very nice hands. Did anyone ever tell you? I ought to know. I'm a manicurist, you know. really have lovely hands. Only you don't take as good care of them as you should. What you need is a good manicure. You'd be surprised what a good manicure would do for you. Would you care to dance? No. Maybe I should say good morning. It's almost light already. Well, good night. Call me up sometimes. I'm so sleepy. What time is it? Oh, it's not even nine yet. Won't you come in? Oh, I must look awful. The place is such a mess. Haven't you gone to bed yet? 
You must be awfully tired. Won't you sit down? Would you like some coffee? No. Just a, a drink. Well, we certainly had a grand time last night, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, I bet I know why you couldn't sleep. You've been drinking too much. Don't you think you ought to take it easy? I don't like a man who drinks too much, Howard. You want me to like you, don't you? I like you. Oh, you're nice. You're real nice. Velma, be surprised. Weren't you ever married, Howard? No. No. Oh, I sure like you. You sure are nice, even if you do drink. I guess I'll have to reform you. That's what I'll have to do. And now, a message from our sponsor to you. Oh, that radio. Isn't it awful about that kidnapping? You know, people who do things like this should be... Well, I don't know. Police are intensifying the search for Donald D. Miller since his car has been found... I hear that. What's the matter, honey? People do things they don't... It don't mean sometimes things just happen. Now. You're awfully tired. Now, why don't you lie down? Here, put your feet up and rest. Say, did you know you had something in here? It was caught in the cuff of your pants. My, it's pretty. It's a tie clip. 22 carat. That's solid gold. Give me that. Say, you told me your name was Howard. What's the DM stand for? Give me that. What's the matter with you? Now, if you're going to behave as if I... I didn't you're... want to take that. Jerry made me. Why did he have to kill him? All he said was he was going to hold him until he got the money. He never said he was going to kill him. Why did he have to kill him? Police. No, Howard. No, honest, Howard. I like you. You were going to tell him. No. <laughs> Let go of me. I wouldn't hurt you. I like you, Howard. I wouldn't do nothing, Howard. I've never been in trouble before. I don't know what to do. I didn't know he was going to kill him before God. I didn't know he was going to kill him. Judy, I didn't honest. <laughs> Can't you? 
Now we got a show for her all over town on Sunday. She's got a lot of nerve. He's been gone two days, you know, and he won't be the first man who's walked out on his wife at a time like this. Do you want the kid to hear? And she pregnant. Now you know why I never wanted any kids. Life's too uncertain. People who can't afford children shouldn't have them. The watchman says they haven't worked a night shift for weeks. Well. That's funny. I'll bet Har didn't want you to know he was laid off. That's it. That's what's been the matter. He lost his job and he didn't want me to know about it. That's why he's been acting so peculiar. Oh, sure, with the baby coming and all. He's worried himself sick. There, there, Judy. Now, don't upset yourself. Maybe we ought to drive to the police station. Oh, no, no. I, I don't want to go to the police. Just drive me home. Howard will be there. I know he'll be back. Sure, he will. Right in. up there. Police cars. My duty there at your house. Oh, please hurry, Mr. Yeager. <laughs> Mr. Tyler's in there, officer. I saw him not more than 10 minutes ago. He's in there all right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here's his wife. What's the matter? What's going on? Lady, you'll have to stand back. This is my house. I live here. Lieutenant, here's a lady who says she's the guy's wife. Bring her up here. Who are they What did you do? Will you please tell me what's the matter? Are you Mrs. Tyler? Yes, what's happened? Your husband's in trouble, ma'am. Have you got a key? Howard, oh, no. If no, there must be some mistake. If you got a key, you can save your door being broken in. Yes, of course. Hey, there he is. Howard! Howard! I just saw the crowd on him, you know. You were feeling sorry for him. I always told him he was no good. What did my daddy do? Nothing, son. Can't you keep quiet? Stay, Stay there, folks. You'll get hurt. Keep it open, men. Move back, Johnny. Oh, please don't shoot. What does he do? Richardson, come here. Take care of this lady. You'll get hurt. Tyler, we've got you surrounded. You haven't got a chance. Mommy, what did daddy do? I don't know, Tommy. Come out with your hands up. Tyler, your wife and boy are here. If you don't want them to see you hurt, come out! Oh, honey, what did you do? Oh, please don't hurt. Please don't hurt. Sorry to be so long. I wanted to get the coroner's report. This turned out to be a pretty gruesome mess. You should see what they did to that poor kid. Are such men human? The war taught us that sometimes God's children can be pretty inhuman. Try not to think about it now, darling. We're going to be late to the Martins. No, no. I've got to go back to the office. You two go ahead. I'll try and join you later. There's Tyler. He's the one that confessed. That pitiful creature. I think he was so pitiful if you'd seen what he and his partner did to Donald Miller. Oh, I know, I know, Vito. Pity is a very nice human emotion. What they did is absolutely inexcusable. Thank you, Mr. Sender. I'm glad you like the way I'm handling it. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Well, thanks for calling. That's the sixth phone call in the last half hour. Gil, this is the most vivid piece of writing you've ever done. Yeah. Can't get over what they did to that kid. You wouldn't do that to an animal, let alone a human being. Well, I've got to get to the courthouse. Where's Vito? His morning walk. He should be back. I've gotten to like him so much, Gil. Yeah, he's the best. 
Well, I gotta get going. They're raining Tyler this morning. Try to be back in time to drive him to the station. Okay. And his train leaves at 2.30. Right. Fido, I was afraid I'd miss you. Gil, I, I must talk to you about this. Hello, Helen. Well, can you make it kind of quick? You are condemning these two men without trial, without investigation. Gil, all of this is a, is a direct appeal to the emotionalism of your readers. Well, that was the idea, Vito. But Gil, this is wrong. It can have serious consequences. As a journalist, you have great responsibilities. But I'm trying to meet them. And the first one is to get the story. Honest, I've got to run. I'll try and get back in time. And don't worry, Tyler and his partner will get a fair trial whether they deserve it or not. What's up? Where are you headed? Don't ask, Gil. Can't talk now. Hey, that was a great story you got on Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got a lead on Jerry Slocum, haven't you? Now don't ask me. Hey, Sheriff. But don't let anyone take any chances. What's up, Sheriff? Where are your boys heading? Dawson. Jerry Slocum? Yeah. Where do you think you're going? With the boys to Dawson. Wait until it's verified. Carl, you handle number two car. Gil, you know I'll let you in on it just as soon as we have something definite. And listen, go easy on this stuff in your paper, will you? What are you kicking about, Lem? I splashed your name all over the front pages, didn't I? We have a problem here. I don't want to see this town worked up, and I'm sure you know. You know what I mean. Maybe Tyler and Slocum are guilty. Maybe they're not. Whichever way it is, they're entitled to a fair trial, so take it easy. Okay, Pop. Just take it easy. Where's the Tyler arraignment? 301, Judge McElroy. They're just about finished. Finished? I thought it was for 10 o'clock. It was. They changed over this morning. Hi, Stanton. Feature, what are you doing down here? Hi, Gertie. What do you mean? This is big stuff, Gil. Yes, yeah, and it's here at the front page in San Francisco. Hey, Beecher, here comes the girls. Hello, girls. Could you step over here for just a minute? We'd like to get a few cute little pictures for our papers. Good. Well, I guess that'll be all right. Well, I don't know. I... Tell you what, we'll get some nice pictures, then maybe we can all lunch together. What do you say? Okay. No, girls, would you just, uh, just put your arms around each other? Which one of you did Tyler confess to? Well, it was me, but I didn't know he was married. <laughs> No statement. But I'm Gil Stanton of the Journal. I think you're the last man Mrs. Tyler would care to talk to. But it... Listen, some of us came all the way from San Francisco. No statement. Please, fellows, Hello. have some consideration. Well, where have you been? Oh, I thought the arraignment was for 10 o'clock. Now, they switched this morning. I wouldn't have known about it myself if I hadn't come down here on some other business. I had breakfast with the mayor. He feels like we do. We're performing a great public service. Loved your story. It's about time people began to realize that we've got a job ahead of us here cleaning up this town. Hi, told you I'd make it. Vito all packed? Yes, he's packed. Good, that'll give us time to talk a little before he has to go. Gil. Vito, I'm sorry. That... This is Mrs. Tyler. Yes, Mrs. Tyler and I met at the... Please excuse me for coming here like this. I don't like to bother you. Not at all. Mr. Stanton, I know how you feel about my husband. But... Could I get you something? No, thank you. I'm all right. You see, he's been out of work. And I'm going to have another baby. It was on account of me that... Oh, now, Mrs. Tyler, you mustn't start blaming yourself. Lots of men get out of work, but they don't... Well, I 
hate to say this, Mrs. Tyler, but sometimes we don't know the people we live with. No, you don't understand. You don't know, Howard. Mrs. Tyler, your husband confessed. I know, but it isn't just what he did. It's, it's everything. Oh, please, Mr. Stanton. You can help him if you want to. I'd like very much to help you, Mrs. Tyler, but believe me, there's nothing I can do for your husband. Oh, you don't know, Howard. He's not a monster like you called him in the paper. He wrote to me last night. Please listen. Dear Judy, I'm writing you this so you will forget me. I'm guilty and I deserve to die. And I will die peacefully if I knew you will forget me and forgive me for what I've done to you. You are a good girl and you deserve something better. I shouldn't have married you and had a family. Don't cry for me, baby, because I got what was coming. I want to get this all off my chest. I went with Jerry and stuck up four or five places. I can't remember how many now I was too drunk. I've been having bad headaches and bad dreams. I keep thinking God is coming after me. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry for you and Tommy. I'm, I'm sorry for Donald Miller and his mother and father. Jerry was going to kill him. This is the truth, and may God strike me dead. I am not saying this to save myself, because it is no excuse. I'm glad it is all over. I want to die. There's no use to live. And you're no good. Judy, baby, I want you to forget me. Good woman, and you can find a decent life. I am sorry I let you down. Go back home and forget me. Howard. That's why I begged you this morning not to treat this tragic crime with thoughtless emotionalism. But Tyler is guilty. Yes, Tyler is guilty. But hate is not the answer. It is wrong to treat Tyler and his accomplice as though they aren't members of the human race. Men don't live in a vacuum. They live with one another. And if a man becomes a criminal, Sometimes his environment is defective. If only we began early enough with the child. That is why I, I decided to make my lecture tour. In my own small way, I, I try to point out that violence is a disease caused by moral and social breakdown. This is the real problem between nations as well as people. And it must be solved by reason, not by emotion. With understanding, not hate. Only thus can we regain the moral center of our universe. Do you not remember how often we discussed these things in the old days? Of course I remember, Vito. Of course you're right. I used words as criminally as they used that rock. It is easy to forget our humanity. Help, please. Now, uh, favorite, help, please don't start this run. As long as you've got a replay anyway, give me 20 minutes to give you another story. What are you talking about? This is the biggest story that ever hit this town. You're doing a great job. No, hell, no. We can't pre-condemn these men the way we've been doing. 
You're crazy. No matter how you figure it, Tyler and his partner killed that boy in cold blood. Whatever they get, they deserve. Al, it's wrong. I've been wrong. We can't do to them what they did to Donald Miller. Okay. Well, looks like we'll have to replay it anyhow. They just brought Jerry Slocum back from Dawson. And there's a crowd gathering outside the jail at the courthouse. Honey, they caught those kidnappers. Everyone's going down the courthouse. Oh, yeah? The book, and that makes it so. The Lord knows your hidden sin. Hey, you. Come on. They got it.
Massachusetts. Tell her that I've got some money. It's in an old coffee can in the woodshed. Move a toolbox. Say it with a doctor. I'll tell her. Pollock. Is there anything I can do? My name's Gil Stanton. Gil Stanton, the newspaper guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I don't know how to say this. I... It's all right. What you said about me was the truth. Please, Mr. Stanton, do what you can for my wife and kid. Please. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do everything I can. Stanton, when you see her, will you tell her I love her? No, don't tell her I love her. Tell her to go home and forget me. Tell her to forget me.
Newspaper to get out. What are you going to say? What do you want me to say? You don't know. Yep, I know. Violence is a disease caused by moral and social breakdown. That is the real problem, and it must be solved by reason, not by emotion. With understanding, not hate. 